Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk about how to calculate customer lifetime value in a discrete time contractual setting. The motivating question is um, in a yearly or monthly or weekly uh, subscription business setting, um, based on our current customer's characteristic, what is the expected value of a new customer? Uh, note that in this case, we're only looking at a discrete time, which is could be monthly or yearly. You get paid uh, from the customer at a monthly or yearly basis. Uh, you don't get paid at a random time. Also, our um, the other in, uh, important thing is the setting is contractual. Uh, in our case, it's subscription business. If you if the customer pay you or purchase anything um, not on a monthly basis, subscription basis, but instead it can purchase it anything at a, any given time, um, it won't be a contractual setting, it will be a non-contractual setting. Um, there is a package called Lifetimes in Python that can do all the calculations in a non-contractual setting. Um, make sure you go check that out if you if your business setting are not subscription um, based. Okay, so the assumption we have uh, here is that here we only focus on uh, customer revenues and uh, ignore the customer acquisition costs um, and all the various other costs. Uh, we're only looking at the money coming in um, in our models. Um, so um, based on this paper um, from a couple of professors, um, the equation for customer lifetime value, the expected value of the um, CLV, which is the customer lifetime value, is very easy. It's um, the sum of your the sub subscription rate times the survival function at a given time. Um, divided by the um, uh, how much the money depreciate uh, at this time. So the survival function at time t uh, in this context is basically how many people uh, are left in the business. The percentage of people are still in the business um, at a given time. Uh, note that this survival function is different from the survival function that we have um, looked in the survival analysis before. Um, so this will be a very straightforward empirical calculation of the survival function. Uh, in the discount rate, it's just the de uh, depreciation rate of the money. It's very common in the financial setting to take into account uh, the discount rate reflecting the time value of the money. Okay, now we can take a look at example. Um, this example is, comes from this paper. Um, I have um, references. Uh, uh, I'll talk about references later. Um, but this example comes from this paper. Uh, so, um, assuming our business um, cut subscription rate is $100 per year and the discount rate is 10%. Um, we have a thousand customers coming to our business. Um, at year one, um, this will be uh, T0. We have a thousand customers and at year two, uh, we have 600, uh, 631 customers left. Um, in year three, we have uh, this many customers left. And then the current year is year five. Uh, we have 326 customers left um, in the business. Um, know that if you are if you are, you have customers coming in from multiple years, you you should align them to the same year, so all your customers starting with the same year. So it's relevant to their starting years. Or if you want to do cohort analysis, you can um, do this analysis by a different cohort. 
um, as when they enter the business. So um, from this example, the expected um, value of the customer lifetime value can be calculated using this equation. We plug in the equation uh, um, below. So it'll be 100 plus 100 times a year two, which is time one. Um, the survival fun function is um, uh, three, uh, 631 over 1,000, which is um, 0 0.631 uh, divided by uh, 1 plus d, uh, which is 1.1, the uh, depreciation rate. And then we can do that for all five years. But note, we have to also do this calculation for the um, the years beyond the current year uh, for this calculation. The issue is we don't really know the future survival rate, so we can't really do this calculation. So the solution is to use a geometric beta, mo beta model uh, to, uh, to, to be able to fit the data and predict the survival rate. Uh, so uh, the, uh, this geometric beta model has two parts. Uh, the first part assumes the customer duration or the customer lifetime follows the geometric um, distribution uh, with the um, theta as the probability of churn. Um, and then the probability of customer churn at time t uh, can be written as theta and 1 minus theta to the power t minus 1. So this is basically the definition of a geometric function. Um, and then survival rate at time t uh, can be written as one, oh, 1 minus theta to the power t. So this basically is assuming um, you survive at each time point uh, till the time t. Uh, and then retention rate at time t can be written as uh, st over st minus 1. Uh, Another way to think about it is how many people are uh, still active at time t over how many people uh, are active at time t minus 1, which is also the time, uh, the number of people who entered uh, time t. Uh, the second part of the model is, um, is this theta follows the beta function with the parameter alpha and beta. Um, because we don't think all the customers follow the same um, uh, follow, have the same probability of churn. It's probably uh, different. So we want to model this um, variability in theta as well. The, way, the reason why we use beta, beta function is because the um, beta function is bounded on the interval um, from 0 to 1. Uh, which is exactly what we want our uh, probability to be. Um, so uh, beta function is very uh, heavily used in um, statistics um, as modeling this kind of thing. So uh, now I have two distributions. The final geometric beta distribution is just the joint distribution of uh, those two distributions. And um, with this function, we can um, calculate uh, the probability of customer churn at time one. Uh, and with some beta function magic and gamma function properties, um, it can be written simply just as alpha over alpha plus beta. So it only depends on the parameters we define here. And through induction, we can calculate um, all the probabilities at any given time. And similarly, through some beta function and gamma function properties, uh, we can calculate um, the retention rate. Um, uh, this is a function of the retention rate. Again, it only depends on the uh, parameters of alpha, beta, and also the time. So if we can find out what alpha and beta is, uh, we can calculate the retention rate at any given point, time point. Um, and 
to be able to calculate alpha and beta, we need the likelihood function, which is um, the probability of losing in one customer at time one and two customer at time two. Um, and, um, and oh, sorry, this is should be um, the little ones in n minus one customer at time n minus one. Um, in the final term, we have we need to make sure we keep the um, n minus or the the sum of the n t customers at the very end. So this is a survival function. Uh, we we need to time the survival rate of um, all the other customers survive uh, at the last time point as well. Uh, so the likelihood function is basically this. We just multiply all those probabilities together. Uh, we'll get this nice uh, likelihood function. And then the log -like likelihood function is basically just take a, taking a, a, a natural log of this function. Uh, and then in order to find the maximum likelihood estimator for our parameters, uh, we can either maximize the log likelihood function or minimize the negative log likelihood function. Okay, so uh, if we finish uh, finding the maximum likelihood uh, estimator for parameters alpha and beta, we can calculate the survival rate for each time point. Uh, again, we mentioned this retention rate is only based on alpha, beta, and time point. We can calculate the retention rate at any given time. In the survival uh, function, um, at time zero is um, is one because everybody is still in the um, in the business, and we can use induction to calculate the uh, survival function when t is greater than zero. And now we have calculated um, all the retention rate at any given time and also all the survival function, survival rate at any given time. We can calculate um, the expected value of the um, customer lifetime value. <clears throat> uh, we can choose a reasonable large number for our k um, because in the original function, this goes to infinity. Uh, we just need to choose a reasonable number here, and then we can plug in all the values you can calculate um, our CLV. So um, here are the re references we have mentioned um, in all the equations and calculations and examples. Um, yeah, please go take a look. It's very easy to read and um, very valuable. Okay, so um, this model was actually implemented um, in Excel um, based on this uh, note, um, but we want to implement it in Python. So uh, here's my Python impl implementations. Uh, first of all, I want to calculate um, the log likelihood function. Um, given our data, um, and then um, and then based on um, based on the value of the log likelihood, we can calculate the negative log, uh, log likelihood. Um, so in our example, uh, we have a total of a thousand customers at each time point. This is how many customers we have left. Um, and uh, we, we need to give it, we can give it any parameters um, to initialize it. Um, so based on the initialize, in, in this initial parameter, parameters, our negative log likely fun function uh, give us a value of um, 1463. The next step, we can use uh, the minimize function from, from, uh, from SciPy. Uh, to minimize our uh, negative log likelihood function. 
uh, the resulting um, negative log likelihood is uh, 1409, which is reduced from our original ne uh, negative log likelihood function. And um, those two values are just the uh, max maximum likelihood estimators for our parameter um, alpha and beta. OK, so now we want to see how our model is doing. Uh, with the, in, the initial parameters 1, 1, we can see um, here I only plotted the survival rate. You can also plot the um, likelihood function or the retention rate. Um, doesn't matter. Um, so here I'm only looking at survival rate. We can see with the initial parameter, the observed value is very different from the, the value provided from the model. However, if we use the, um, the optimized parameters, uh, the observed survival rate at each time point is almost the same. Uh, there is slightly difference at this time point, but it's, it's very close. So we can see the, the model fits the data fairly well. And then um, after we have calculated our alpha and beta, we can plug in into the equation and calculate the expected uh, value of the CLV. Again, we'll get the alpha and beta from the uh, um, from the from the um, model, and then um, we give it a discount rate and also um, the the sub subscription rate and then calculate the result. As um, we expect, a new customer would, um, would have a customer lifetime value of $362, which is the same as uh, what we would get from the paper.